Hey guys, it's Terry from Big Cosplay here. Um, so today we're going to be looking at uh, some of the changes in Armorsmith Designer. So it's the uh, wonderful cosplay program that we are currently using for all of our fantastic uh, resizing of patterns, uh, Pepicura patterns, etc. Um, STLs, um, object files, everything like that. So what I've got here is I've got an already trimmed out uh, version of a uh, Promaris helmet. So a primary Space Marine helmet. Now what I mean by trimmed out is I've, re I've removed the parts that I don't want as far as foam goes and things like that. So um, as you can see you can resize the whole thing quite easily. So you can scale the part, you can do free deformation so you can actually grab corners and um, whoops hang on. <laughs> you can actually grab corners and you can move, you can bend and and screw around with the entire pattern, which is really cool. So, um, do, do, do. and so there, you know, we can go across to the pattern layouts, etc. And the pattern layouts will mirror exactly what we're doing here. So, why is that not undoing? <laughs> That's all right. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do. Yes, I'll just remove that there. I'll reattach the costume part. And it's already twisted out of shape, but I don't think the pattern's twisted out of shape. Oh yeah, it is too. Oh look at that. So I'll have to come back and um and, and readjust that back to where it's supposed to be. There we go. So it's come back looking pretty. So we come across the pattern layout. Now this is where it starts getting fun. So here we got the actual helmet here in all the parts and when we click on a part it'll highlight it over here on the right in red. So we've got that little part right there. Alright. And this is where the program gets really cool. I think at least anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a lot of these parts. Now in order to move a part you've got to right click and go translate. So once you're in translate mode, you can start moving crap out of the road all over the place. Easy as. So, as long as I can grab it properly. So in this case, we're going to grab this part here. Which I'm just moving everything out of the road so we can see it clearly. Alright. I'll zoom right in on it. So that part there, I double click on it click on it, it should show me which part it is. Why is it? Oh, <laughs> because I'm already in edit patterns mode. Alright, give me one second, I'm just going to remove that. There we go. <laughs> it's making a liar out of me now. Alright, so Let's start again. <laughs> I've completely screwed the pooch on this, but that's okay. So let's come back to the pattern layout. So one of the coolest things you can do is, and I've already removed the actual pattern from this, which is going to wreck what I'm trying to show you. <laughs> that's all right. Um, so. I'll just jump straight into it. Actually, you know what? I'll start with an entirely different file. We'll do something else, something um, a little less confusing. And let's have a look. What have I got in my list here? There we go. We'll just use that one. So now I'm just going to attach that. That's another Primaris helmet, but it hasn't been trimmed out and sorted, and it probably hasn't even been. I oh know it's been it's been um, unfolded properly. So there we go. All right, we're exactly where we need to be now. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look. So I'm going to move this all this stuff out of the road so we can see this part. So we're back to where we were. But we've only got the single layer at the moment. So 
and I'll get to layers in a second, guys. Now, you've heard me say layer a couple of times now. That's because it's a new addition, brand new addition in Armorsmith. So, now, one of the things we've always wanted, now, as you can see, that's that part there on the actual helmet. So, I'll make that bigger so you can see it. There you go. Now, one of the biggest problems I've always found when creating a object out of foam from Pepakira is it doesn't give you the extra bits you got to glue to. So you kind of got to approximate after the fact. So as you can see on this, this part here, so the part that I'm actually playing with, is actually right to the edges. I don't know if you can really see my mouse here, but it's right to the edges of that other part of that uh, of that hutch piece, and also the earpiece, which obviously you know you can't have that when you're working with foam. Same here on the on the back corner. All right, so you got to have something to glue to. You got to have a little bit of meat there. That's always been the biggest problem about Pepper Cure and everything else is it's never had the ability to be able to truly give you that. Um, that ability to be able to edit the vector lines, edit the, the pattern lines, etc., and add stuff to it. So, without going too far into it, let's just make this bigger so we can see it quite clearly. Move that over to there. We're working on that part right there. And also, there's another thing. is when you're... One of the things Pepper Cura does is it makes everything in nice, big, chunky lines. So, you know, every single curve, as you can see, is made of a straight line that goes from point to point to point. And that's nasty. That's horrible. Um, me, personally, I hate it. Now, when you're starting to work with things like lasers and stuff, where well, you do need to have that accuracy, you've then got to dump this out as a DXF uh, file or PDF file or whatever, bring it into another vector program, muck around with it, edit it, rejoin the lines, do all sorts of crazy things to try and smooth it up. Now, wow, here is a perfect example. I'm going to zoom right in. Look at this. This is a this is a massive problem. Now, you get a laser trying to cut that, it's going to leave a nice little chunk where it's going to miss a bit. All right, same here where it comes up and then all of a sudden it hasn't got any line to go with. It's yeah, it's just inaccurate. Here's another perfect example right here where we've got a, a, a little bit that's completely chunked out. And we're stuck. We, we can't do anything. Uh-oh. All right. Let's take a look now. So... I'm stuck on a moving everything at the moment. There we go. Fixed it. Right. So now we're going to move into some of the new functions. Now, what Randy Kavanagh has done has added one of the best features I have seen in a very long time. Um, and, and been after for, for so many years now that I've been I've had this ability to, for this program. So down the bottom here, and I can't really zoom in, but down the bottom here, you've got your layers so you can drag that up to wherever you want but so you've got a, def a default layer right so what you want to do is you want to right click on the default layer right you don't want to create a new layer you just want to right click on the new on, on the default layer and go create layer from patterns all right so it'll be a two drop downs one is create mesh from the layer and the other one is create layer from patterns so you do that and then all of a sudden you've got yourself a second layer. Now, if you take the default away, you'll see that all of a sudden you've got this outline there, which is really cool. All right, so on that outline, we can, as soon as I can get to it, right click on that outline and go edit node. All right, and then Viola. Look at that. We can now go through and actually edit 
all of these horrifying, unconnected bits and pieces. Like for instance, these two here, I want to select both of them and, and it's driving me nuts. So I'll go weld those together. Look at that. These two, weld them together. These two, look at that. Look at that horrible gap. Weld them together. All right, so that just joins them all together. Now, the best and I believe by far the most useful function that I've seen to date is this so you can select well, we'll just we'll just select actually we'll select one to start with now as you as I as I said earlier all of this is this curve actually we'll find a better curve look at this we'll select this curve instead so we're going to select all of these but not the N2 okay not the N2 ones we just want to select all of those there so all of those those nodes and now we're going to go over to the right and you can see that the selectors is a corner. We're going to want to change them to a bezier. Okay. And then, wow, look at that. We've got ourselves a curve. Now, it's not the straightest curve in the world, but this is where it starts to get fun. So, always got to go to translate so you can move these things around. So, once you go to translate, then you can start cleaning it up yourself. Zoom right in. And you can make that curve what you need it to be. All right. So I find bringing the handles further in makes it a lot easier to work with. Now, if you're unsure of where all of these lines actually are supposed to be going, um, you can always turn the visibility of the bottom layer on, which I always do anyway. Because in this case, what I want to do, all right, is I actually want to add some flesh because as you can see this part here which is this this piece I'm working on I don't have anything to glue the ear flap to so I want to add a little bit of extra meat to the ear flap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this one out and I'm going to continually do that all the way along the line so I'm, I'm going to make myself a nice little curve now some of these I won't need, so I can simply delete them. Because obviously as, as soon as I start making the curve a little bit smaller, I'm eh, not going to worry too much. So we'll get rid of that one as well. Bring that one down to there. And you can see it's starting to make that beautiful... Looks like approximately 10 millimeters, etc. All right, so I've got one here. So what I obviously I want to make a little bit of a square corner here, so I can turn that one into a corner piece, and then drag it down. So look at that, just like a bought one. So that gives me now a nice curve to add foam to. Oh, sorry, should I should say add, add a bit to the foam. So there we go. I mean, that's it's as simple as that. Now, see, up here again, we've got another point that needs welding. So we weld that. We've got a whole nother line here which needs to be turned, turned into curves. So we'll select all of those. And we go weld. Whoops, I didn't want to go weld. <laughs> that was a bad idea. I want to go bezier. <laughs> Um, and so again that turns it into a curve and if you want to have a look at your curve you can always come down and turn the visibility of the bottom layer off and go and straighten your curve up a little bit and just make it look a little bit prettier so I find bringing the handles in works well and just moving it up just a touch so and I mean, you can fiddle around with this sort of stuff for hours and hours and hours. So obviously, you just want to get a bit of a handle on it. And you don't have to do them all at once. You can do one at a time. So you can select one node at a time or two or whichever and just go to Bezier and it'll change it. So again, up the top, we talked about the fact that is, obviously, I'm going to click on the visibility of the base pattern. And up at this top section, I want a little bit of meat there to, to put on that. So I'm going to drag this one up to give me a little bit more meat. Now also, 
something I want to have a look at is, is this the back section down here? And I believe it is the back section. So I wanted a little bit more meat on there as well. So in that case, I'm going to drag that out to give me a little bit more meat to stick to that. So again, we go all the way up, making a nice little edge, which we can now glue to. Now we can get really precise and, and, and muck around to try and make that into, you know, a bit better. Um, okay, let's just delete that one there because we don't need him and move him up to there. Now, obviously, with a lot of nodes, you don't need a lot of these nodes because if you've got a straight line, you only need point to point. Um, but obviously, if you have curves and stuff like that, like these, so I'll select those ones there, curve them up, those ones there, and curve them up as well. And that one looks like it needs welding. That's oh, already welded. Look at that. So, if I take that away, you can see it's nicely welded. So again, these ones here, they all need to be turned into curves. So those are curves, and those aren't. So there we go. Those are now all nicely curved. Make sure all of these are too. There we go. Just like a bought one. Now obviously across that front section here, uh, coming back down to the pattern, that's all curved across, so we probably want to do some tricky stuff here. So see all this stuff here? I don't think I want any of that there. So I'm going to remove those. I'm going to weld these two. And this is the bonus of this, is you can go through and change all your patterns around to what you believe they should be. So you don't have to anymore suffer through, and we'll weld those two as well, the hassles of trying to stumble through making Pepecura work for you. Armour Smith Designer now does it all for you beautifully. So as you can see there, what I've got is a usable, functional uh, piece of, almost piece of, look at that, I forgot to add that extra little bit of meat on the bottom down here. And this is a cool part of it, is you can go through and look at it again and again and again, and go through and edit the whole thing. So, as you can see on the, on the full helmet, we'll just bring the full helmet into, into spec. There we go. As you can see on the full helmet, certain areas I'm going to need to have some meat to glue to. And so I want to make sure I've got enough meat to glue to that. Uh, including like for instance, you know, you might make more modifications on those parts before you go to print or laser or anything like that. And that's the fantastic part of it. So there has been some significant performance increases uh, in the program as well. Um, the layer function, the edit, the curves and bezeers and, and etc. chamfers, breaks, there's, there's a whole myriad of of extra functions available now in this program and it's only getting better and better so soon that will increase and become better um, as far as you know making it a lot easier to simply just make a pattern um, you know an editable pattern straight from your pepper cure piece so as you can see I can now remove that now once you're finished this is the most important thing once you're finished editing up in the top corner there you'll see you've got a commit button so once I commit it's now committed through and in the program so now you can see I've got a couple of little issues and problems like for instance a flat spot right here which I'm just going to go back to edit node and fix those up translate move it around the place and it looks like it's this one here that's causing all the grief There we go. So now I'll go back up to commit and it's nicely curved and clean. All right. As easy as that. So again, now you can lock your bottom, your, your patterns and things like that so things can't move around, which is fine. Um, shortly there will be a, the ability to, and obviously, you know, I've just gone through a whole editing a part. I've, it's, it's, got a, it's got a companion mirror part 
on the other side of the helmet. Um, shortly, there will be upgrades to the software to allow you to copy and mirror um, those changes. So you can make one piece, and obviously at the moment what we do is we make one piece, we make a template for that one piece, and we flip the template over. It becomes that simple. But, you know, having that ability to do that in the software would be really, really handy because then you'd be able to have your entire both sides and parts, etc. Especially if you're laser cutting. Um, you want to have your both part, both sides there so that you can cut the whole thing out. So yeah, there we have it. 101. Armorsmith Designer. The new functions. At least a couple of the new functions. So, alright guys. Well, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, don't forget to go to, arms, to the armoredgarage.com. It's extremely cheap for the software, for what it is, uh, and the updates are always coming through. So, so go to the armoredgarage.com, uh, jump onto uh, Facebook as well, and you know, look up Armorsmith Designer. There's a discussion group. There's all of the things that you need uh, to help you along. There's multiple different uh, mobs that will help, and at the same time, I'll always give you a hand if you need it. So um, until next time. We'll uh, see you soon.